Welcome back to AlgoJS. Today we're going to be looking at how to implement Radix sort. So the intuition behind Radix sort is pretty straightforward. The general process is to go through each integer starting from the right side and compare those values. So what I mean by that is we order these integers based on their last value. And this will give us this result. So that's the first iteration. So as you can see, we've ordered them by the last value within each integer. Now we need to look at the second value within each integer. If a value doesn't have an integer at the second position, we can just class this as zero. So if we ordered based on these values, we'd get an array that looks like this. And then if we order based on the third position, so this doesn't have a third position, this doesn't have a third position. If we based our sorting on these values, the results would be. And then finally, if we ordered them by the fourth value, we would get, and as you can see, this is sorted in ascending order now. So there are pros and cons to Radix sort. If you have a small input where each input is a single integer, so from zero to nine, the time complexity would be linear because you'd only have to go for it exactly once. However, if you had larger inputs like this, this would increase the time complexity, but we'll go into more detail on time complexity later. So that's the intuition behind Radix sort, pretty straightforward. However, the implementation is a bit more tricky, so we'll dive into that now. So for this implementation, we are going to need two arrays to solve this. We are going to need something like a count array, which is going to store how many times we see each one of these integers. So it's going to be of length from zero to nine, right? Because there can only be zero to nine values, and they can all be initialized to zero. I'll go into what this is for in a second. The second array that we're going to have is the sort array. And what this is going to use is it's going to use the information calculated within this count array in order to place the values within here in the sorted array in order. And here, this array is going to be the length of this input array. And again, they can all be initialized to zero. So what we're essentially going to do with this array is we're going to add up the totals of the integers that we find in here. So let's go ahead and do that now. So in this array, we have one, two. So we update at the index that value by one. So this goes to one. Again, we have another two here. So at index two, this value goes to two. Five goes to one. Four goes to one. And I'll speed up the process so that this is finished. So right now we have the count of each of these last integers based on the index in this count array. So the index in this count array equates to these integers and then the values within the array equates to their frequency. Now, before we can use this count array in order to populate the sort array, we first need to do some additional logic. And that is to add all the adjacent values together. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I'll explain why we've done that. So zero plus zero is zero. Zero plus three is three. Three plus zero is three. Three plus two is five. Five plus two is seven. Seven plus zero is seven. Seven plus one is eight. Nine. And then finally we have nine. So why have we done that? So in order to work out the position at which these values, so say we find a two, we look at index two within the count array, we see that it needs to be added in the sorted array at position three. So this right here, this is not the index, the index is two. So it's the position minus one. So the first two that we find is going to go at position two within the sorted array. So let's run through a couple of these so that you understand what's going on. So we're going to loop through this array backwards. So we see two, we look at the count array at index two, we see it's at position three. So we decrement one to get the index, and then we add this two within the sorted array at that index, which we calculated in count array. So two goes in here. Then we go to 12, 12 ends in two. So we go to index of two in the count array. We decrement that to find the index. So it's index one, and we add 12 into the sorted array at index one. Then we move to 85, that ends in five. We look at index five, which is at position seven. We update that to six. We look at sorted array at six and we add in 85. Then we go to two, three, four, look at index four. That's at position five. So we decrement one to get the index. Then we add two, three, four into 
the index at position four. Do the same for 67. So seven is at position eight. So we get the index. Then we add that integer into the sorted array. 415, decrement 6 to 5, add 415 at index 5. 9028, decrement 9 to 8, add 9028 at index 8. 454, decrement 4 to 3, add 454 at index 3. And lastly, 8562, look at index 2, decrement that to 0, and add this into sort array at index zero. And as you can see, this sort array has been sorted via the last values within the integers. So once we have created this sort array, then we just update the original array with the sort array input. And then we repeat the process on the second integer, then the third, then the fourth. Then we'll have an array sorted using radix sort. So time complexity of this algorithm is going to be om times n, where m is the max number of digits. So in this case, it's four and n is going to be the length of the input array. So firstly, we need to work out the length of the maximum number. So if we work out the max num, which is going to be equal to math.max, and we're just going to spread out the array, so this will give us the maximum value. Next, we need to know what digit we're looking at. So initially, we're going to start off at the zeroth digit, and then we'll move up to the tenth digit, the hundredth digit, etc. So while max num divide by 10 to the power digit is greater than zero, we can run a helper function, which is going to take an array in digit, and then we can increment digit so that we look at the next integer within the integers. And finally, within this function, we can return the array. So what is this while doing? Well, we have the maximum number. So say the maximum number is one, right? And if we divide by 10 to the power of zero, this will be, so as long as we have a value within max number, this is always going to return true. So as long as we have a value within max number, this is always going to return true. As soon as we reach the value where there is no longer a number, so it's equal to zero, this is going to return false. Okay, so let's write out our helper function. As we stated, this is going to take in an array and digit. So firstly, we need to initialize count array. It's going to be equal to a new array of 10 values, and we're going to fill each one with zero. Then we have the sort array, and this is going to be an array of length to the original array and we are also going to fill that with zero. Now what we need to do is work out a way to increment our count array for every time we visit an integer within the original array. So we need a variable called which digit, and this is going to be 10 to the power of digit. So if the digit is equal to zero, this is going to equal one. If the digit is equal to one, this is going to equal 10. If it's equal to two, this is going to equal 100. So that's how we work out which digit we need to look at. So then we loop through our array. We need to get the count index of the value we want to increment. So that's going to be equal to math.floor num divide by which digit modulo 10. So what this is doing is working out which number from the original array we need to add or we need to increment within our count array. So say we have the value 8562, right? If we plug that into here, so it will be num divide by one modulo 10. This is going to give us the value of two. If we increase which digit to 10, this will give us the value of six. If we increase it to 100, it's going to give us the value of five and so on. So we've worked out a way to get the integer we need. Once we have that, we can just increment count array at count index. So that's the first stage done. Then as we stated in the explanation, we need to loop through the count array and add each adjacent element together.
So count array at i plus equal count array i minus one. That way we can work out the index with which we need to add the integer from the original array into sort array. And then we need to loop through the original array backwards. So array.length minus one, i is greater than or equal to zero, i minus minus. Get the count index for here. So count index is going to be math.floor, but instead of passing in num, we're going to pass in array at i. Divide by which digit? And then modulo 10. Once we have the index, we can decrement count array because we're going to add that integer into the sort array. So const sort index is going to equal count array count index. And then we just set sort array sort index to equal array at i. So we're adding the integer from the original array into the sort array at sort index. Then we just need to loop through the original array and update those values with sort array. And then just return the array. And then if we run this radix sort, so if we console.log radix sort, passing in the array we used in our example, then check in the console. And as you can see, it has been ordered using radix sort.